Hi everyone. Uh, I hope you all enjoy playing the linear public goods game. So let me give a brief overview of the game, and then we're going to analyze the game and look at the data. So in each round, each group member receives the same amount of money. That's your endowment. And you can simultaneously choose how much to contribute to a public good. And in the Mob Lab experiment, they call it the water purification project in the sense that, you know, that's clean water which will benefit everyone. And each individual's benefit from the project is the total group contributions times the rate of return. So this is a screenshot from your experiment. So in this experiment, there are four people in each group, and the rate of return from the group account is 0.5. And that's in the project details. So your strategy in each round is to choose how much of your endowment to keep in your private account and how much to contribute to the group project or the public good. You can also, there's a history page, so you can also view what happened in previous rounds, how many tokens or how many dollars other players invest. So what's your payoff? Um, your payoff depends on your contributions and the contributions of the other group members. So here's an example. We'll go through a numerical example and we'll do a little more of a high-level analysis. So you started with $20 in each round, and the rate of return is 50% or 0.5. Let's say that the group of four contributed $20 in total, and you contributed $12. So what is your payoff? Your payoff is what you start with, which is $20, minus your contribution of $12. So that's how much is left in your individual private account. And your $12 go into the group account, and the other people from your group contributed $18. So all together, there are $30 in that group account. And each of the $30 um, had a rate of return of 50% to you, which means that you derive $15 of benefit from the group account. Um, so your total payoff in this case is $23. Notice that it's higher than what you start with, which is $20. So this game is meant to represent the provision of public goods through voluntary contributions. So there's a, a question of why people donate to public goods. Um, lots of the public goods, such as you know, Wikipedia, uh, United Way, were provided through private voluntary donations. People donate time or money to a good cause. People might be doing that for social rewards or punishment if they, if they free ride. And sometimes the incremental increase of the public good is worth that much to them. They might do it out of altruism or you know, positive emotions such as fun or interest. And so what's relevant in this context is what economists call free riding, which means you choose not to donate to a public good but still benefit from the donation of others. For example, you listen to the public radio and you don't contribute to the public radio. That would be free riding. There are similar terminologies existing in other disciplines, so social psychologists call it social loafing. And so what we see in this example is that each participant had 20 tokens to start with, and they can either keep it in their private account or contribute some to the group account. The private account is converted to cash at a constant rate, whereas the group account yields a lower return to the individual. So in our experiment, it's 0.5, which means your private return from your donation is half of what you put in. But each additional dollar contributed by others also give you this additional return of 0.5. So in the numerical example that we did before, 
Other people contributed eighteen dollars, and you derive nine dollars of benefit from that、um, donation as well. So let's do a simplified analysis with only two people,、um, and then we'll increase it to more than two people. So with only two players, so let's say player one contributes X one tokens or X one dollars to the group account, and player two contributes X two tokens. The rate of return from the group account is 0.5. So what is your payoff? Let's say you're player one. So your payoff pi one is going to be 20 minus X one. So that's what remains in your private account. Plus 0.5, the rate of return times the total amount in the group account, which is x1 plus x2. So now we simplify this expression and combine terms.、Uh, that becomes 20 minus 0.5 x1 plus 0.5 x2. And you can do the same thing for player two. And it turns out that for player two, player two faces very similar incentives. Player two's payoff is going to be twenty minus point five x two plus point five x one. So now we're going to focus on player one's payoff, your payoff. After considering everything, both the return from your private account and the return from your group account, you will see that to maximize your own payoff, the best thing that you can do is to contribute nothing, which is to set x one equal zero. Why is that? Because every dollar that you donate is a subtraction of 0.5 from your payoff, but you you would argue that well, player two is also putting money in the group account, and I derive benefits from player two's contributions. That's true, but you have no control over how much player two will be contributing. So the more player two contributes, the more payoff you will have, and the more you contribute. You know, it's a net subtraction from your payoff. So we say that in this case, no matter what player two does, the dominant strategy is to contribute nothing to the group account. So this is actually true for both player one and player two, which means that x one equals x two equals zero. So that is the game theoretic prediction, assuming that everyone's self interested. Now, what if you have more than two players? Let's say you have an arbitrary number of players, n players, and they all face similar incentives.、Uh, it is straightforward to generalize this into the n player case. So, take player i as an example. So, we call the payoff pi i, and that equals twenty minus point five x i plus point five times the sum of everybody else's contribution. So that's the big summation sign x j, j not equal i. That just means the sum of everyone else's contributions. So again, with the n player case, it is still a dominant strategy to contribute nothing to the group account. So basically, x i equal zero for all i. But when n is greater than zero, the Pareto optimal outcome, the efficient outcome, is actually to contribute everything,、uh, because individual i loses 0.5 times x i, but others gain 0.5 times n x i. So everyone else gained this amount. So the total welfare actually is greater when everyone donates everything. So that is the trade-off. Between the private incentive, which is predicted by your equilibrium strategy, your dominant strategy, and the social welfare、uh, maximizer. So this, if you have heard of the prisoner's dilemma, this is just a generalized version of the prisoner's dilemma. So let's take a look at the data. So this is the data from the previous cohort of students. In the actual experiment, yes, you are endowed with. Twenty dollars or twenty ECU for each round. You are in a group of four. In other words, n equals four. But the three other players are actually bots. So that gives people flexibility to log into Mob Lab and to play the game whenever they, whenever it's convenient for them. So what is the bot strategy?、Um, in the first round, the bot randomly draw an amount between zero and twenty and donate that amount. So on average, the robots donate ten per bot, but it's it's a random draw from a uniform distribution. 
In subsequent rounds, the bots act as conditional cooperators in the sense that they would contribute the average contribution of the other three players from the previous round. In other words, if the others cooperate in the previous round, I will cooperate as well, but if they defect, I will defect. So it is a very common strategy that we observe in these games. And if you look at the right-hand side of the slide, this is a summary of the individual contributions over the five rounds. This is, this is all human data. So what you see here is the box and whisker plots, and the green bar is the median contribution. So what you see is in the first round, it's 10, and it goes up a little bit in the second round and move back to 10 in rounds three to five. And what you see is that, you know, overall the average contribution, especially in the later rounds, is about 10. But there's, again, a fair range of contributions. So there's some people contributing all 20 tokens, and there's some people who free ride and contribute zero. So what have we learned from this experiment? Again, we show that theory makes very precise predictions, assuming everyone is selfish. So if everyone only cares about their own payoff, the dominant strategy or the, uh, you know, the equilibrium strategy is to contribute nothing. What have we learned from the data? We see that the more students are contributing nothing in the last three rounds, but some students contribute everything. And most students are actually conditional cooperators, meaning they basically match what everybody else contributes. So that's a fairly robust behavioral pattern that we see in voluntary contribution to public goods experiments, especially linear public goods. So you might be wondering why we include this experiment. This is to illustrate the incentives to free ride on others' contributions when a public good is present. However, people don't really behave as if, you know, you don't get everyone contributing zero. Um, so there are some people who are conditional cooperators, some contribute a lot, but you will always have some free riders. And it basically lay out a theoretical basis for the field experiment that's coming up in the next module, which is online movie ratings. So we will present an experiment on movie lens and you'll be asked to do a homework assignment using that movie lens data. It turns out that movie ratings is a public good in the sense that your ratings will benefit other users on the site. Um, and there's also an incentive not to rate as much. So hopefully from this stylized mob lab experiment, you get to experience the incentives to contribute when there's a public good present. Um, so uh, let me emphasize again that, you know, for this section, we analyze the data from the previous cohort, and I'm going to do uh, the data analysis for this cohort during office hours. So please come to office hours if it works for your schedule. Otherwise, you know, please download the uh, recording of the office hours. Thank you.